Hello, and welcome to the beer pad. We were totally that was, cutting it close. Uh -huh. That was cutting it closer than God knows what. I mean, you sent me the link. I just have time to type in my funny little name for the for the episode, and all of a sudden I'm in the show. What's going on, brother? You okay? Yes, I was uh, running late on graphics, and uh, both you and I have doctor stuff today. So, Oh, yes, yeah. yes. Oh, yeah. Sorry, let me get my old man cushions sorted. There you go. Uh, lower back. Welcome to the old people zone. Yes, I'm going to wear my hat. I feel weird without it. Okay. <laughs> you but can wear it. Uh, you're watching the beer pad. That is Marcus Beer, the fantastic, inimitable, one of a kind, and who is a, a bit miffed about the state of English refereeing these days. I'm oh, sorry, it's a fucking, man. Fucking that was joke. so bad. Oh, That's... that ref, those referees need to be fired. They released the audio today, and the audio I, is I heard just it. a joke. I heard it. It is just a joke. And I'm sorry, no boondoggles to Saudi Arabia to keep. Yeah. You know those yeah. those fuckers happy, uh, yeah. but anyway, let's let's talk about fun things. Let's talk about <laughs> good things. Um, my yeah, great so, friend Raymond Padilla. Thank you. So we what, are we're still in a we comic talk books. About? Are we still talking about comic books. We are. Last week let's we talked talk comic books. We talked about our five favorite each DC graphic novels last week. So this week we're gonna give Marvel the treatment now. Surprisingly, I found this harder to pick than DC. How was how was your experience whittling down your list? Oh, piece of piss, piece of piss. Really? I mean, not, and that's not a uh, slight upon uh, the good folks at Marvel with regards to uh, what they, you know, what they put out there. Um, I mean, you were spoiled for choice. I mean, as, as per the DC ones, you are spoiled for choice. And I mean, there's a there's a few that come to mind that missed out right um on uh, on you know my selection um and i mean you, thankfully you have what you have two of them in fact um oh. but one of them that we both missed out on was house of m which is a really great in my opinion uh x-men book as is days of future past i mean house of m is actually a series yeah um yeah and then you've got days of future past which is uh a seminal one. You've got Dark Phoenix. And yeah. I'm reeling off X Men and Mutant books because they are some of the best. Um, I mean, you've got uh, Spider Man Back in Black. That's another great one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's you know there's Avengers Disassembled. Oh uh, yeah, another really so good one. Cool. In our DC um, picks, we had a lot of uh, of Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale, and we did not pick any of their Marvel stuff like. Uh, Daredevil Yellow and Spider-Man Blue, which are yeah. also great, great books. I've actually got, I've got Spider-Man Blue here, but yeah, it's uh, it's one of the ones that didn't make the cut for me. Um, but I think it's yeah, I mean, and then we didn't even look at the Ultimates, the Ultimate uh, books because the Ultimate books, to my uh, you know, they get a lot of unfair shit. The Ultimate books, really, and okay. um. I like, uh, I mean, I started collecting them all from day one. Um, and I've got, you know, X Men, Wolverine, Fan oh, sorry, X Men, Spider Man, Fantastic Four. The Ultimate Iron Man book is actually another one that is incredibly enjoyable. The Ultimates book, the Ultimates Fantastic. one, two, three. Um, I mean, the, uh, with apologies to my bed bug ridden French friends, there is a line in the Ultimates where Captain oh. America. <laughs> yeah, points to it, you know, and talks about you know the A and says, "Do you think the A stands for for France?" Yes. When it's inferred that he's a coward. Yeah. So, uh, no offense, I'm just repeating what Marvel wrote it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, there there are so many. I mean, and that's the thing. We are blessed. We are really lucky as comic book nerds to have so many of these. Right. Books. I mean, I, that's why it was hard for me because um, as I mentioned last episode, I, I very much follow the writers and what for most of our lives, Marvel has had more money to pay writers and artists. So a lot of my favorite writers spent more time with Marvel than they did with DC um, just sim simply for the economics of, of it all. So yeah. that we're, as you said, we are blessed with, with, so much great Marvel stuff by a lot of our favorite writers. Yeah, um, not all of them, Stan Lee. 
<laughs> yes. Um, you know, look, who is an absolute legend. But let's face it, we got, you know, uh, Steve Ditko, you got Chris, Chris Claremont. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, John Brian Byrne. Michael Bendis. Uh, Bendis, yeah. is, Bendis is one of my favorites, but. Very polarizing yeah. again, isn't he? Almost too much to pick from him. It was hard for yeah. me to to be like, what's my favorite Bendis book? Is it Ultimate Spider-Man? Is it Daredevil? I mean, he's done great stuff. Yeah. On, on, and that, that was too hard to pick. Yeah. So why don't we kick things off with your number five? I went first last week. I think it's your turn this week, my friend. Why don't we kick things off with my number five? Yes, indeed, uh, Raymond. What is your top five? What is number five of your top five? Number five is Journey into Mystery. This was written by Kieran Gillen, who is a former video game journalist in England, going to show you that Video games do not all become old and worthless and washed up as they get older. So, Except for us. Yes. Well, between him and Gary Witter, I mean, they're, yeah. they're putting us all to shame. Yeah, um, yeah there, there's actually more than a few who are putting us to shame. But, uh, you know, fuck them. Bastards. I, I am proud Talented of all bastards. of them. I am proud yes. of all of them. No, they're all amazing, amazing uh, individuals, male and female, all yes. of their own Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. So tell me why you like Journey into Mystery, because it's, it's actually one of the few that I have not read. Ah, so Journey into Mystery is typically associated with Thor and those stories, but this is one one of those periods when Thor was, was gone. So the focus was on Kid Loki, who had died... But, of course, they don't really die in comics, but he becomes back as a kid version of himself. And it's a fun story that kind of rewrote Loki. Instead of the god of lies, he becomes the god of stories. And also, he he's, he's very much a kid, even though he is, you know, known for making mischief and creating havoc. But he's very much a good guy, not really even an anti-hero. He's kind of a misunderstood good guy in this one. And a lot of it is is just very clever writing. Um, there's a lot of moments that are, are very sweet, which you would not expect from a Loki story. Like he ends up adopting a hellhound and it, and it becomes a boy and dog story for a bit with this cute, demonic, very deadly, lethal dog. And Loki, who is known as the god of lies or god of mischief, but instead is trying to become the god of stories. And it's just really a captivating tale of the other Asgardians that are not Thor. Obviously, Kid Loki is the focus, but uh, a young Hela is involved, and it goes to explain the relationship between Loki and Hela and how that all makes sense. And it just adds texture to the whole world of Thor and develops Loki as a more interesting character instead of a one-dimensional maniacal almost like a mustache twisting villain he, he's well, really good. layered it is good i wasn't ignoring it. i was listening to you i was actually just yeah. tweeting out uh retweeting our tweet and i put the first tweet out and it's i said live now but it auto corrected to love now <laughs> so um i had to delete that and, and re and re uh, retweet because i refuse to call it fucking x i'm sorry yes um no Same. i think it's great i mean this book sounds like um the nuanced loki that we we've started to see in the mcu and indeed, yes this time next week we will be uh drooling uh oh, actually not even this time next week is it at the end of this week loki goes live oh, is, it, is it really that soon damn yeah i've been loki so absorbed with ahsoka too. that <laughs> it's coming i mean may, you know maybe uh maybe you'll actually you know and i can talk about it as yeah. opposed to you cheating on me with that uh <laughs> paul semmel dude you know um of course Yes. So, I mean, that's, uh, I, I'm, I'm all for that. I'm all for giving them the layers as it were, because it, it's, it must be really challenging to write a comic book because, you know, you're looking at how do I twist things around? How do I make things fresh? And there's so much that's already been done. Yeah. So, you know, taking these characters and giving them this, uh, this padding and this, uh, this third dimension, I think is fantastic. And I am being honest where, where, where I say that, because Kieran Gillen wrote this, because it was written by a former video game journalist, it, it holds a special place in my heart because he's just a fantastic storyteller that once upon a time did the same kind of work that I used to. But then he did important things like comic books. <laughs> so, and all we do is talk about them. Yeah. Because we aren't old nerds. 
Yeah. So that is that is my number five. I'm totally. Let us see. Oh, your your number five is also one of my favorite books. Drumroll, please. Planet Hulk. Yes. The classic, the absolute classic, the one that got kind of touched upon in uh, Thor Ragnarok. But this book is, it's obviously it's one of my favorite ones. And then there's the follow-up, World War Hulk. Um, but it basically covers the Illuminati sending uh, Hulk into space. And they're supposed to send him to a planet <laughs> where there's, you know, there's, uh, you know, no life for him to destroy, but he can live out his days and his food and this, that, and the other. But the best laid plans of the uh, Mr. Fantastic and Black Bolt and Professor X and Tony Stark and all these others um, <laughs> go awry when he gets sucked into a wormhole um, and gets dropped out of the devil's anus into <laughs> the, the, uh, the land where there is lots of you know um glad gladiatorial shit going on um yes and it, i mean it is it's different it is totally different in a lot of ways to uh obviously um thor ragnarok i mean this is purely a hulk story and it talks about you know hulk being on this planet uh sakar becoming this champion uh falling in love finding peace um, finding, yeah. finding peace yeah um and you know and going up against a bad guy and it's not the jeff goldblum mustache <laughs> twirling cheeky wink kind of guy this the bad guy in this is is more of a joffrey from game of game of thrones i mean yeah. he's a little bitch um <laughs> so yeah i mean you know he the it's got twists it's got turns it's got an ending that is uh quite a gut punch um, yeah and then which leads on to world war hulk which is all about hulk seeking revenge on those who wronged him um a bit closer to home yeah. um yeah so it's just i mean it's just a great book i remember picking it up it's like big huge book and it is it's just a big huge hard i got the hardback version and i just really really it's, it's one that I'll, I'll read every year um and you know, following it up with World War Hulk is great because World War Hulk then is just I mean, it's brutal. These two books together, they are brutal with regards to some of the things that they do. Yeah. Um, and you see what the Hulk can do when there's no Bruce Banner to hold back. Um, I mean, that's one of the things I liked about perhaps some of the ultimate books where you see the hulk in that particular in those particular books especially the ultimates and he is a cannibal he is a randy old goat and he is just vicious vicious so yes i re thoroughly recommend planet hulk and indeed its follow-up world war hulk yeah and i think these are all by the excellent greg pock if i'm not mistaken a fine uh, yeah. Korean American writer. Let me uh, let me just check. And it's funny the the first thing I read from him yep. actually ties into video games. Do you do you remember that EA um, fighting Marvel game like the the Imperfects or, or something like that? Oh, vaguely, vaguely. vaguely. It was it was not good, <laughs> but uh, one of Greg's first breaks was writing the comic book adaptation to explain these characters. Oh um, my God. Poor guy. One of them was like a, uh, a mutated ballerina that got like really strong legs. So, Oh God, I remember this vaguely, but Oh, by the way, that's another one we forgot. Oh yeah. How we could forget the zombies is beyond me, but we did. Cause uh, <laughs> that's a, the, the the ballerina one though, my friend kept calling her Swan Quake, and I just thought that was that was the funniest part of the whole thing. That's hysterical. So I will move on to my number four pick, which is Runaways. Uh, youth, it, it's kind of like a youth-oriented book that takes place in Los Angeles. What this was interesting to me because so much of the Marvel universe 
is East Coast, specifically New York, like the Baxter buildings there, the da uh, Daily Bugles there. So, you know, uh, the X-Men were orig originally spotted in Greenwich Village. So, so much of, of Marvel centers around New York. It seemed like 99% of planet Earth's crime took place in New York for whatever reason. Well, it's understandable. <laughs> and New Yorkers, and I grew up in New York, so we have a very New York-centric point of view, and we kind of don't think about the rest of the world a lot of the time. So this was cool to see a different part of, of America in a Marvel book. I know they've done things before, like uh, West Coast Avengers, which was not great. Uh, they and had the, great, great uh, lakes champions. Avengers. Let's not forget the champions. And the champion, although the second champions with the kids, I thought was a great book, but the one you're talking about, who was in that? Like Angel and Iceman, Angel, <laughs> Iceman, Hercules, Hercules, uh, Black ah, Widow. That's all. Um, yeah, I mean, that was uh, basically yeah, they, they, the rejects of Marvel at the time, right? Yeah, it was really quite a. I mean, I enjoyed the book, I actually enjoyed it. Um, it was one of the first ones where I, ha I actually had that the, the, the first edition. Wow. I had a number a champions number one and uh oh my mom bless her heart she oh. threw it out with a pile of other comics but uh oh, no. you know anyway um yeah so tell me I mean obviously I'm familiar with the runaways from um there's the TV show right I watched right. that briefly I got kind of I mean again it's you your taste can skew that little bit younger, I think, than than mine does. Absolutely. Um, and I, that, that is nothing wrong with it. I think it's great. But I don't, I mean, there's stuff like, you know, this squirrel girl, um, <laughs> you know, but I mean, there's this there's stuff, Miss Marvel even. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I think Kamala Khan's a wonderful character, but I just, it's, it's not really, I don't right. know, I'm just, I, I'm the wrong side of 50 now. Right. Well, I will I will address that. Uh, there's a specific reason for that, but um, for Runaways, it's just it's a group of kids. Uh, all their parents are are wealthy Angelinos, but it, it turns out they find out that their parents are part of this secret society trying to summon this ancient god, alien god, to Earth and and take it over. Like and, everybody, all the West Coast <laughs> Coast elites do. How many kids yeah. like Lizard Pizzagate? Yes, I mean <laughs> that. The, the, clearly, they're all you know Democrats. That's what, of course, yeah, yeah. What they all do. Because rich um, people in California all vote Democrat. Yeah, yes, except in Orange County. So the kids, Fuck Orange County. The the kids Fuck find out County. about their parents and they rebel like teenagers do. And it turns out, you know, some of them have powers. One of them's a mutant. One of them's an alien. One of them is a witch, so she has the magical powers. One of them is the he's the child of genius inventors, so he happens to be smart too, even though he pretends to be a dumb jock. So you have all these this mix of personalities, you know, that they don't really it's hard for them to get along at the best of times, but then when they all ditch their parents, go out on the lamb and they they run away together. Um it's an interesting super team dynamic that you don't get because, you know, most super teens aren't teenage runaways that are rebelling against their parents. And, you know, there's a lot of Los Angeles stuff. Like they, they have an adventure that takes them to New York briefly. And like, this place sucks. There's no in and out. Um, in and out is an overly re religious cult like burger experience here <laughs> in Los is. Angeles. And in in Nevada too, they have like three or four here, and I think one in Arizona. Yeah, like well, it's it's basically Chick-fil-A, but with beef. <laughs> and without the without the, the homosexual persecution. Oh no, no, no. no. Really? Unfortunately, um the owners of In and Out are devoutly religious. And, oh, I did not uh, know not that. very nice. So, yeah, I mean, I'm sorry to ruin everybody's fast food favorites. I mean, I used to love In-N-Out until I learned about those people. And then I used to also love Chick-fil-A when I lived in North Carolina. I didn't know any better. So, uh, yeah. yeah, such is life. Um, there's this one one panel that makes me laugh. There's a, the youngest is a, is a mutant who's probably like preteen. And she's the strongest one physically. And she, she just wallops the Punisher in the stomach because she thought he had superpowers and when he gets like floored she feels guilty about it she's like 
Oh. He's like, oh no, I didn't know he was just a guy. <laughs> He's like, I thought he had like punishy powers or something. And like, well, no punishy oops. powers for, but for Frank Castle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, segue. Well, almost. We have to go to your number pick. Oh wait, My, I, did um, not, I did not flash the art. Um, oh, flash the art. Flash the art. Flash that oh, art. Sorry. So these are oh, the runways. They're so runny away. The one all the way in the right is Molly, the youngest, who beat the crap out of the Punisher by mistake once and, and felt very guilty about it. So, yes. Uh, Brian K. Vaughn, excellent. You might also know him from his, uh, what's that spy movie thingy he, he did? Brian K. Vaughn. You don't talk about Kingsman, are you? Yeah, isn't that him? That's Matthew Vaughn. That's me. Oh, same thing. No, <laughs> they're both. Yeah, I think Brian K. Vaughn might be an American, and Matthew Vaughn's a Brit. So uh, um, you're yeah. you are correct, of course. And I don't think either are related to Vince Vaughn. <laughs> um, just, I, I hope they're not. Let us double check. I like their work. Um, yeah, that's a good. No, that's a good pick. I mean, like I said, it's probably a little. Uh, well, that's like my wheelhouse, but yeah, you know. Although the my next one is so within my wheelhouse. I mean, you've gone <laughs> yeah. young, and I've gone old man Logan. <laughs> um, I mean, again, now this is um, Mark Miller and Steve McNiven. I mean, Mark Miller, right up there with yeah. one of the greatest. Comedy. We're talking about Ultimates before, so yeah, um, Scottish gentleman. Uh, but we won't hold that against him. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Old Man Logan. Now, obviously, uh, people think, uh, "Oh, it's like the Logan movie," but it's not. I mean, this is this is a real mind fuck of a of a comic book. Um, heavy. So heavy. I mean, there's so much stuff in here that you that you see going on, and it's set in a post post apocalyptic future, and a lot of the heroes are dead. America mm -hmm. is divided up into different sections. Um, and I mean, when divided, it's literally like, you know, huge swaths of territory. There's huge swaths of it that are irradiated and nothing, you know, you can't really go there. And you see, uh, you see Hawkeye, who uh, was actually mm -hmm. on the cover of the book there, very old with his gray ponytail. Um, you meet the Hulks, which are a, um, and you can actually see the bottom uh, on the bottom right. You can see one of the Hulks because the Hulks have, have gone um, Appalachian. <laughs> yeah. I think that's the only word you can say. The <laughs> Hulks have word. gone Appalachian. That's a great um, way to describe it. All that's missing <laughs> is a fucking banjo. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, this it, it basically is about, you know, Logan undertaking one last quest. And he has to travel across the country. And there's parts where he does reunite, reunite with people like Hawkeye. Um, and, you know, he has to battle the Hulks because years of inbreeding. Exactly. But it's just, I mean, and, and, you know, it does come to a very satisfactory conclusion. And it's a nice denouement, if you will. Um and yeah, it's just one of these again, one of these books that you pick up and you're like, oh my God, Logan. Oh. And it's not to be confused with the death of Logan. Right. That's a different book. Right. Um, this one is definitely left field. This one is um yeah, it's another, you know, the one that's really dark in places. Um, and I don't want to spoil it, but I do recommend it to everybody. I mean, you know, it's mm. Mark Miller's a sick little bugger. He's a <laughs> sick boppy. Uh, but I mean, he has he has good stuff. And I mean, the the things I mentioned about the Ultimates version of Hulk are carried on here <laughs> and then expanded <laughs> upon exponentially. I mean, this is Hulk. Yeah, X amount of years down the line in a post post apocalyptic world um, with a bunch, uh, you know, of inbreeding and lots of baby Hulkers. Hulklings, if you will. Uh, so, yeah, it's not cute, fluffy. It's not your grandma's Wolverine or your grandma's <laughs> Logan. It's definitely not your grandma's Hulk. Um, and yeah, I just, I thoroughly recommend it just to see how things ch have changed. And you see how, I mean, it's very similar to No Man's Land, 
which we talked about last week is one of my right. favorite, favorite DC book. And it's got this thing on you. It's Gotham blown up to the entire United States. And you know what? It's very prescient because you can just see America going this way. Um, hopefully not in our lifetime, but you know it's going to happen at some point. Um, but yeah, you, you, like the bleak, you like the bleak settings, eh? Well, dude, one of my favorite games is Fallout. <laughs> hmm, makes sense. I mean, you know, yeah. I've got one. I mean, this is one of my favorite times in the last in my life was 2020 and the pandemic, apart from my bypass. I mean, the last six months of the year, my wife and I had the best of times because we didn't see anybody. We spoke to people on Zoom, but we had our own cocktail parties and we cooked and we went out for walks and it was just it was just the perfect time because nobody lets you down like people do. Hmm. Dogs don't let you down. Cats, they don't pretend to even give a fuck to let you down. But I mean, you know, humans just let you down. And I think I've got, I always had this glass half empty kind of outlook on life. I am a pessimist. I've always looked at the, you know, if I set the bar uh, really low, then I'm always going to be pleasantly surprised. I hope to be pleasantly surprised when somebody exceeds it. Unfortunately, there's so many people and so many experiences in my life that haven't exceeded it. But, you know, that's just me. I'm a grumpy old bastard. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I like I like the dark. I like post, post-apocalyptic. Uh, and this, you know, this ticks several thousand boxes for me. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's just a great book. What's next for you? Give me a number three, big boy. Another Mark Miller story. Marvel's Ooh. Civil War. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Now, this is one that would have been on my list, but thankfully I saw it on yours. Yeah. It's, it's, oh, and, this is, oh, and this is Civil War 1. Yeah, 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 yeah. Civil yeah. War 2. Yeah. Because Civil War 2 can suck <laughs> that. Not so I good. Mean, it's, right, it's right up there with the, 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 the second secret wars. Uh, mm. I mean, it's just never happened. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I wish they'd never happened. So yeah. I know why I like Secret War, uh, Civil War. Why do you like the Civil War? It's such a good conflict. Um, but I love the way it starts with the new warriors who were like nobody's favorite comic books, but I, I love them <laughs> as, a, yeah. as a kid uh, just because they were different and, and younger and they were not uh, as. One of the reasons I like the youth books, particularly, I like the stages like the New Warriors or the Teen Titans, where they're not the major superheroes, but they're not sidekicks either. They're in that time of life where, in real terms, it's like when you're in your, most people are in their 20s or early 30s, where you're not a fully formed adult yet. You're figuring out who you are as a, as a person. I think that's the most interesting stage of life. Yeah. And I like seeing the superheroes in that stage because they're they're dealing with all that stuff in addition to having superpowers and, and being a hero. So newer warriors kick it kick things off with a conflict and an oopsie that starts this government idea of having superheroes register themselves with the government so they can, you know, officially carry out superhero activities. Iron Man is all for this. He thinks there should be some measure of control. These people have immense power and there needs to be oversight. Captain America is not. He is all about freedom and defending people with ideas and not being corrupted by government because he's seen corrupted governments and what that can do to the world. So there's a big conflict. There are two sides and they end up fighting each other. And you have this iconic shot they they actually recreated in the movie yeah. where cap and or i mean iron man beats the shit out of captain america in this even more so than in the movie he's just he's just left a a battered bloody mess and in addition to the the physical toll it it takes such an emotional toll on both of them because there there is love and respect there but they also are standing strong with their ideals. And it's interesting to see which heroes take which side, you know, which heroes change sides, which Indeed. which villains are, are. So that, yeah, that's why this is so fascinating to me because the, it, it's not about saving the world. It's not about repelling an alien invasion. It's about standing up for what you believe in. And yeah. that's that's what drew me to the book. Why, why do you love Civil War? 
Well, first of all, I, um, I want to point out the similarity between Civil War and your number one pick last week. Okay, yeah. Because you think about it, it even starts in a very similar way. Oh, absolutely. With you know a you know a team of unliked, untrusted, untested superheroes or superpowered individuals right. going after a character, and something happens. Right. And from that caveat, as opposed to the government uh, in Civil War, it was Superman. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, for me, and look, and this is. This is the first of uh, of a couple of books that we're going to talk about that sprawl across so many books. Um, if you try and collect all the, the graphic novels, that you're probably looking at about 20 or so because you've got Road to Civil War, you've got the main Civil War ones, and then you've got the subset. No spin-offs. Four yeah. books. Um, Spider-Man and what happens to him is really quite incredible uh, and tragic in a lot of ways. Iron Man, you see him rise, you see him fall. Um, you see what happens to Captain America at the very end of this. Uh, mm -hmm. So there's a lot of ramifications. This is a very powerful book that really did shake up the MCU. And, I mean, the movie, Captain America Civil War, only scratched the minutest of surfaces. Right. And while it is one of my favorite books with regards to um or movies rather with regards to what that uh the russos did and you know they went on uh you know followed up by you know winter soldier and then they went off and did end game and um uh infinity war i mean the russos just they showed their bona fides in those first two captain america movies they did i would have loved to have seen civil war being a genuine almost you know uh three film avengers arc with everything tied into it right. because i know they went with the infinity stone but i felt they could have maybe you know kept that to follow up i mean obviously with tony stark dying it was a a little tough but yeah i think it's it's a great great a great series of books the twists and turns i mean spider i just spider-man yeah he had such a poor peter parker man it just and again we don't want to spoil this um, the best way to read any of these books, by the way, I mean, obviously you can go out and buy them. It will cost you a shit ton of money. We're talking a couple <laughs> of hundred bucks just to get these. Um, and I, I, I hate shilling for anything, but the Marvel Unlimited app on your iPad uh, that you can get for the iPad is $9.99 a month. It is fantastic. There is no reading limits. Now, they don't have the most brand new books, but we are not talking about brand new books. Right. Yet. All the ones we have talked about are on the app. They're easy to read. The app is very stable now. It went through a lot of shit back in the day. But you can pull these and books like Marvel Zombies. You can pull, uh, pull um, House of M. And you can really go... Because they curate the lists. They will give you a full curate. Oh, you want to watch read Civil War? Well, this is where you start. And then you go this, 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 all the way and down. And it keeps you in the right order yeah. so well, which is... Because they can get confusing, like these big, massive stories. So I, they, I really they, appreciate they can it. Be. Yeah, they yeah. can be. I mean, the downside is that there is a little bit of uh, chaff. I think hmm. some of the books are a little bit, you know, a little bit too much because obviously they try to, you know, make sure everybody's got their two cents in. Uh, but still, it's uh, it's an absolute seismic uh, series. Um, and again, yeah, one of my favorites. And I'm so glad that you put it on the list. Yeah. Now, earlier we were talking about some disturbing and funky and twisted things going on with Mark Miller's books, but I don't think he can touch a certain Mr. Someone who wrote Punisher Max. <laughs> I mean, I Punisher think Max <laughs> is my pick. Uh, Punisher Max is, uh, let's see, Jason, Aaron, and Steve Dillon. And yeah. I'm looking like that because it's literally in my eye line right here. Uh, Punisher Max is uh, number my number three number three pick, and the first time we've we've gone with uh, with old Frank Castle, and it's Frank going to war with the Kingpin. But you see the rise of the Kingpin through this book, and it is R-rated. There's swearing. There's nudity. There's sex. There's so much gore and violence. You yeah. see 
how uh, Wilson Fisk rises up and how Frank inadvertently facilitates the rise of the kingpin. Um, and it just it it's it's a it's a very grown up comic book. Yes. Um, and this is the the sort of Punisher we deserve to see on, in our movies, on our TV shows, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Because I mean, again, you know, all due respect to the people who played the Punisher in the movies, in particular, they're not a patch on this book. Um, I, um, the, I mean, John Bernthal has done manfully uh, with uh, his Frank Castle, and I really hope he is back in Daredevil, and I hope we get to see a uh, an, a real hardcore version of Frank moving forward. Um, but I won't hold my breath. But <laughs> yeah, this is just above and beyond. This is it's violence, but it's not gratuitous. It's violence with a surgical precision. Right. Everything has an impact. They're like it, yeah. they're, they're, Everything has a purpose. Yes. There is no collateral damage. Everybody who is killed deserves to die in Frank's mind. There is no um, there's no collateral damage. He is, you know, he goes in and he does stuff. Um, and yeah, I just, uh, I got a lot. I just love Frank Castle. I mean, and I think it's the most violent book, uh, of, you know, of all the Marvel books I've read, um, apart from maybe Deadpool kills the <laughs> Marvel <laughs> universe. Different um, tonal, different tone. <laughs> different tonal. Yeah. So uh, again, Punisher Max, it's a big, hefty book. This is one I'd recommend you buy because you won't want to, uh, you know, you won't want to lose it on an app. Get the hardcover; it's beautiful. It's a, just a beautiful big book. Uh, so yes, that's my that's my number three. I really like the way you described it as as adults because it, it really is apt. Like a lot of the Punisher stories I loved were the Garth Ennis ones, which can get a little silly, you know. Like yeah. people know his stuff from The Boys and everything, where it is violent, but there's a lot of great there's a lot of great Punisher books. I mean, we haven't even talked sure. about Warzone. Yeah, yeah. Warzone is another classic, but this one is just because it's part of the uh, the Max series. Yeah, this was a much like Marvel Knights. This was a different spin off from the Marvel yeah. imprint, if you will, and it was it it was aimed at grown ups. Very, very um, distinct from the other Punisher stories that I enjoyed. And yeah, it stands on its own. It's really fantastic yeah. stuff. Now, moving on to my number two pick. It is Dan Slott's Superior Spider-Man, which is a Spider-Man book in body only, kind of? Yeah, or absolutely. Yeah, I, yeah. I didn't read this as a book. I actually came across this on the Marvel Unlimited app. Ah. And I fully endorse your choice of this movie. <laughs> of this so movie. the setup is through supervillain machinations, uh, Doc Ock is dying, and he finds a way to take over Peter Parker's body. And he becomes the superior Spider-Man. So he has a like young, freaky Friday. Yes. He has a young, youthful body. And Dr. Oh, Octopus's cunning, diabolical body. mind. And mm -hmm. what's funny about it is how it, it gives you a whole new side of Dr. Octopus. He he falls in love with, with a scientist. Um, he does still have his arrogance, but you realize later that that Peter is still in there somewhere and he, he does influence what he does and how he acts and he helps doc become a better person. And at the end, I he mean, finds out that he is not the superior Spider-Man. Um, it's just, a, just a lot of heart and humor and really, it's a totally Peter. different take on Spider-Man. I mean, yeah. Peter, I mean, you know, whereas Peter has always been this struggling, starving student taking yes. photographs for the Daily Planet. I mean, Doc Ock turns Peter Parker into this um, <laughs> slightly less, you know, slightly less douchey Elon Musk <laughs> genius type, uh, you know, huge, huge success. I mean, uh, Parker Industries. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I mean, that's that's a really interesting aspect as well, because we've never get, got to see Peter enjoy this. So we're, we're still not watching 
Peter enjoy it, but we're yeah. watching his body enjoy it. And it's almost yeah, like he, he's showing Peter the life he should be living. Yeah. With that, if he had just that little tweak, yeah, in his in his drive, um, and you know, I mean, he does. I mean, Doc Ock does things that are good for people. Yeah, you know, the inventions they do they make a lot of money, but there's a lot of them that do good things. And the scientist he falls in love with is a totally unexpected character again. Yeah, and you know, it's got some diversity to it, which is great because it's not what you'd normally or you would have expected out of a marvel comic love uh you know situation uh you know 20 years ago 30 years ago right um you know she's not tall and leggy and you know right. busting out i mean um she's a short she's person and but, but she's it's, a, it's a meeting it's yeah. a meeting of minds yes and the minds fall in love with each other and i, I think it's just wonderful ah but she also she also cooks her way into his heart which i think she does but <laughs> she she helps make otto a better yes as yes. much as spider-man as much as peter parker does very much so and i i loved her role in the in the book as well yeah just and this was my first time you know spending a lot of time with dan slot books and i've later learned that he is just a fantastic writer and he's become one of my favorites recently so good good stuff there now your number two pick is a little bit older than oh, wait did I forget art again? I did. You forgot your art. There you go. So there is the superior Spider-Man. Yes. Fantastic stuff. Now we are taking a trip a little bit more into the past than my number two pick, but also fantastic book. Iron Man Extremis. Yeah. Now, first of all, I do want to um, take a lot of uh, take a minute to totally disassociate this from the uh, oh. abysmal use of Extremis in Iron Man Three, the movie <laughs> uh, that was a basically lethal weapon five, and a, in my opinion, the worst of the Iron Man movies. I know a lot of people are like, oh, it's Shane Black, <laughs> um, but it's a fucking horrible movie. It wastes aim. It uh, does the Mandarin no fucking uh, uh, you know service at all, and thankfully we get to see the Mandarin in Shang Chi. Uh, but it also wastes extremist in turning the characters who have it into a bunch of bad video game, yeah, uh, cannon fodder. Yeah. So Iron Man Extremis basically starts off. Um, or, you know, one of the first things that happens is Tony gets his ass kicked <laughs> by somebody who's got extremis. Um, and when I say ass kicked, I mean, it's life or death. He is in a bad way. And Maya Hansen, uh, who is, uh, you know, obviously the, 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 the person who created extremis, um, she admitted, works with Tony, you know, to debug it, if you will. And Tony gets it. He gets extremists and he's in this cocoon. And then, you know, he's he's made these little things where he can um, hold his suit. Um, it, basically, his suit becomes a almost like a hardened um, uh, plastic. And then the real sheath of the suit, the underside, is stored in the hollow of his bones. I mean, he has the power. He He's basically, you know, he can connect to Wi-Fi using his mind. I mean, all this stuff. I mean, it really puts Tony Stark in the superpower league for the first time. I think, uh, and it's just really, really cool because you see the initial Extremis book, which sort of like is Extremis Origins, if you will. And it just covers off how Tony gets it, what happens. And then you see after that, further down the line, you start to see perhaps some of the side effects. You start to see can people fuck with it, mm -hmm. um, and it's just a great book and a, a great series because it says, you know, in my in my mind, it basically says, what happens if a superhero truly gets superpowers? Now Tony's mind has always been his superpower and his ability to invent stuff, but right. now he's got these powers. He's practically indestructible. He can heal. He can tap into networks. I mean, he's all you know, virtually omnipotent in a lot of ways. 
And what effect does that have on Tony Stark, who, let's face it, has a bit of an ego. Yes. And I think it's just a great observation of all that. And then you get to, you know, you do get some of the things you get to see what Maya Hansen's been up to uh, and, uh, you know, some of the shenanigans she pulled. Um, but, it, you know, you see that first book and then you just take it off from there and it's beautifully drawn. Um, I have to say that the the artwork on Extremis is just again one of those most beautiful uh, books that I, I've seen. Um, and yeah, that's 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 just it's my favorite Iron Man book. Far yeah, more. like when one of the reasons I I liked it so much is it it was my first. It, I know it wasn't his first appearance, but it was the first time I read about a, Ezekiel Stain, and, and I just think he's such a cool bad guy. He's every bit as smart as Tony, but without morals and with uh, his arrogance takes that step too far. And he's almost that bad guy that you, there are times where you're rooting for him because he's, he's kind of cool, you know? He's obviously the son of Obadiah State. Yes. Who plays a very important role in Iron Man's earlier life. Um, And he was also in the movies as well, right? He's uh, played by Starman. Jeff Bridges yes. in the first movie. Yes, he became an ironmonger. <laughs> now, I, whenever I hear Jeff Bridges, I think of that line from Ted Lasso where he's like, I'm trying to build bridges. You couldn't build fucking Jeff Bridges. Like, What does that mean? It's so funny. Though. It cracks me up for no reason that I can think of. So what do you think about Extremis? Um. Probably my second favorite Iron Man story. I did like the the one where Rhodey got the armor, uh, right. where Tony was just just got totally absorbed by his alcoholism, which isn't something. Dem- yeah, Demon in a Bottle is uh, is is one that's. I mean, again, you talk about a ahead of its time. Yes, comic book. Yes. Um, I mean that 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 was from the eighties, and that was one of the first times that they'd actually talked about these sort of things and yeah. I, I will say fair you know fair news to marvel i mean they do get a lot of criticism for being the lighter fluffier but if you I don't know at, man that, well no i mean you yeah. know it's the it's no the you're, right, you're i mean it, the dark they do is they do have that DC. yeah they do have that right um, nation, but yeah with with the demon in the bottle with a lot of daredevil stories or the daredevil stories with, with a lot of the drug abuse uh, drug abuse you also like, look yeah. at um Hank Pym and uh, Janet Van Dyne yeah. and the spousal abuse. Yeah. That is something that in particular, the Ultimates books yes. really shows quite graphically. Yes. Uh, so yeah, there's uh, they, they, they really have tackled some stuff and I think it's great. We need to have this stuff in the books because yes, kids are going to read it, but kids need to learn about this stuff. Right. They and- need to learn that it's a problem and there's issues and these things happen and not everything's candy coated. Boop, boop, boop. I think that's why Demon in a Bottle hit me that hard is because at the time, you know, I didn't, as a kid, I didn't know that superheroes fought things other than villains, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, wait, they have their own problems they have to deal with. And, you know. And- but again, it's this, it's this thing we discussed at the beginning with it, with your with journey into mystery. It's adding the layers. Yeah. It really is. And obviously uh, another Iron Man book, if you, you know, if you want another recommendation is Armor Wars. That we are going to see as a movie, a mini series, series, yeah. Um, but what I will say is, and uh, before um, the MCU fucks it up, go read Armor Wars. Well, they they can they can continue writing it now. Nobody could act in it though. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so we we are at we're at the top end of the list, and I would like from you, sir. Your, actually, do you have any artwork for Extremis or no? I did. I flashed it earlier. Um, did. Did I you? did, but I will flash it again. Oh, you did. That's <laughs> right. It was just that just that little one. I apologize. So hit me with your number one. And maybe do you want to lead with your artwork for number one? Just pop it up yes. there. and Hit you it's... with my best shot? Yes. Fire, fire away. away. It is a lovely story that takes place in Jersey City. It is Ms. Marvel. Ooh. The Adventures of Kamala Khan. Now, the, so many reasons I, I love this book. It was just such a refreshing take 
on on being a superhero. The setting was unique. As, as I mentioned earlier, so much of Marvel takes place in New York. Jersey City is kind of like the armpit. They they call New Jersey the armpit of America, at least New York. You need to change the bottom scroll. Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, because otherwise uh, Iron Man is looking a bit yeah. um, smelled. So I, I love that it was a female lead. I love that it was a Muslim lead. I love that it was a Pakistani American lead. It, just dealing with our different cultural issues and the generational gap between having Pakistani parents growing up in America and just the struggles of, of being a high school student and, and trying to fit in. Then all of a sudden she finds out, well, at, at the time she was an in, inhuman. Yeah. Uh, she has later been rewritten pretty recently. Actually this summer, she is now a mutant. Um, yes. Which I think is more perhaps tapping into her Marvel, uh, her MCU uh yes. side because they want to align those yes but um and yeah, it has I, nothing at all to with the rights of the x-men reverting back to marvel does it <laughs> who knows um yeah well they're now accepting pitches for the x-men movies yeah. um so kamala khan she had an eventful summer oh my god yes yeah kamala khan became a mutant and she <laughs> did yeah she went and died. She didn't even die in her own book. She <laughs> died in Spider-Man's book, for God's sake. That's just, I mean, that's just mean. It's like, oh, you're sorry. Yeah, we're going to kill the character <laughs> off. But we can't be bothered to do it in her own book. We're just going to put her in somebody else's. I mean, wow, insulting. Much no wonder the fans were fucking ape shit for that, yeah. uh, that one. Yeah, they were They were not pleased. Yeah. Um, all right, so with regards to Kamala Khan, this is actually a, a series I have read. I I have gone, um, and I'm a big fan of Kamala Khan. Um, yeah. I think the Marvel show was great. Yeah, uh, absolutely. It was it Imran Vellani? Yes. Uh, I support, apologize for the mangling, uh, but I thought she was fantastic. I can't wait to see her uh, with Tayona Paris and Brie Larson in Nia DaCosta's The Marvels yes. uh, uh, towards the end of this year. Actually, next month, November, I think it is. Uh, very much looking Please. forward to that. It's going to be, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a great movie. But um, the god-awful Avengers game that came <laughs> out from Square Square, sorry, Square Enix and the one that killed off Crystal Dynamics. Um, she was the saving, a, or not saving, Ray. She was the one bright spot, yeah? Oh, she was. The writing, the voice acting for that, if they'd have made that a Kamala Khan Miss Marvel game, Ooh. I'd be so happy. That would have been great. I didn't need any of the fucking superheroes because <laughs> she is the shiny, the one shining point in that turd, turd of yeah. a game. Yeah. Uh, an absolute shit turd of a game. But yes, I'm I'm a fan of Kamala Khan. I'm looking forward to seeing her adventures moving yeah. forward. Um, I'm not sure. Well, actually, I understand why they retconned her into a mutant. Because yeah. let's face it, um, well, the you know, well, sucked. Yeah, TV I show. mean, you got, you got, a, you got. I mean, I got a lot of time from Anson <laughs> Mountain Cow, um, and Black Bolt. I think is a you know a very cool character, very uh, much as is Medusa and the rest of them, and the dog, the teleporting dog, Lock, um, Lockjaw, Lockjaw. That's right. Um, but, oh, I yeah, love Lockjaw in this book. Oh, yeah. The but the Inhumans TV show was just a. Ah, uh, it was uh, it was just a, a curdled yogurt of a fucking show. Uh, did you finish so it? badly written. Did no, you I, no, I, I did. watched two episodes and then I just said never again. <laughs> I kept never. waiting, like it's gonna get good now, right? It did yeah. not get good. <laughs> never again, never again. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't think we'll ever get an Inhumans movie, but or a TV or a nope. proper TV show on Disney Plus. Um, but yeah, I mean, in the books, she's affected by the Terrigen mists. Mm -hmm. And she becomes, she has these superpowers, and they are different superpowers to the book, to the TV show. TV show, she's got more lightning, lighting, yeah, related, like energy, light. yeah, yeah, um, which taps more into the other Mar the Marvels characters. Uh, but in this one, um, I love that she's got a power that's embiggen. Yes. Um, and it basically means she got a big fucking fist and she's going to use it. Um, 
And I love that her mom says, can you go like enlargen or whatever that thing you do is? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, she can stretch. She gets to get big. I mean, she, but she's also got other powers. But yeah, I think, you know, God bless Kamala Khan. Love her. And I love that she's essentially our point of view character. She is a comic. She's a superhero fangirl. Yeah. She writes, she wrote like Wolverine Storm fan fiction. And then she met Wolverine and told him about it. And, you know, it's, I, I love that she awkward. I love when she geeks out when she meets these new superheroes. And they kind of show that in the trailer for the Marvel's movies. Like, whoa, you're Nick Fury. And like, as she yeah. suddenly floating around in space, she's just totally going fangirl on Nick Fury. So I, it, it has this innocence in the tone that I, I just found really charming and, and infectious. And it was just such a unique book that. You know, if you've been reading superhero stuff for a while, read this one because it, it gives you a different take on the superhero experience. If you don't necessarily read superhero stuff, give this one a shot because it's it's not so much like other your standard Spider-Man books and stuff like that. It it is different, and to me, it's unique and one of my favorite books in the last thirty years and ever. I really, I think it's interesting. Before we get to my number one pick. I think yeah. it's interesting with the difference between our books, our choices. You have gone for character-driven series, like actual books and runs of books, whereas right. I have gone for more event-based one-shots, right? Or two hundred one-shots, if you count, <laughs> you know how many there, there are. You know there there are in you know these different moving parts. But I think it's interesting that you know you've gone for a character, character, character most of the time, with the exception of Civil War. Um, yeah, and I just think it, it just goes to show how these books can be so different to individual people, and we can all get so much out of them. Right. And to be fair, some of the, some of the Marvel events get too big for me, like the the Secret Invasion stuff. I it just got Secret Invasion was about as good as the book, <laughs> as was but as good as the TV show. Yeah. Uh, again, it just gets it gets convoluted. I mean, the Kree yeah. scroll war. That's gone on for so long. Uh, the Infinity, you know, we didn't touch on the OG uh, Infinity Gauntlet series. Yeah, I love where, the Jim um, and Thanos stuff. is, uh, you know, courting death, and death happens to be most sometimes a skeleton in a shroud, sometimes a hot woman in a shroud. Right. Who knows? Um, yeah. So I mean, it, it, there's it, Marvel does a lot of events, a yes. lot of event books, probably more so than DC. In my opinion but talking of events yes this is one of the first event books i ever picked up and this is secret wars now this is not to be confused with the secret wars from about i don't know a decade ago or whatever it was never happened sucked <laughs> monkey butts uh and it's not going to be compared with the secret war that will follow up kang dynasty because um I don't know what we're going to get with that because the MCU is in such a very strange place. This mm -hmm. is something appears in Central Park and variations of it appear in different parts of wherever superheroes go. <laughs> and all the superheroes are drawn to the Central Park one or to whatever's you know local, as are villains. And once they get sucked into this, the thing disappears and they're spinning through space. And there's one of these things is full of heroes, one that's full of villains. And then you hear the Beyonder. The Beyonder mm -hmm. is God. With a really Beyonder. bad costume. <laughs> With a really bad well, thankfully, you don't see the Beyonder's costume until towards the end when there's things have been inter interfered with. Um and the beyond that basically creates battle world. Mm -hmm. Battle world is torn from different planets. So there's a suburb, I think, of Pittsburgh. In no, there, no one and, needed that. <laughs> and then you know, lots of different other planets, different terrains, different creatures, who all get pulled in, like in uh, intelligent life forms get pulled into this 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 great big battle world. And he basically challenges the heroes and villains to battle, and the reward for the winners is untold power. 
Now, obviously, you think, oh, it's just heroes, villains. This is going to be really interesting. But no, they throw in a third wheel because you've got the heroes, you got the villains, and then you got the fucking X Men. <laughs> and the X Men have Magneto and uh, Ch Charles, and obviously, you know, their group. But this was released at a time that the X Men were really at odds with the rest of the Marvel Universe. Um, and it's it's like the the classic X Men, uh, you know. This is Cyclops. This is Nightcrawler. This is um, Kitty Pride. It's right. uh, Rogue. Uh, Rogue and yeah, Storm. Yeah, you can see. Yeah, you can see them there. Uh, oh, Colossus Rogue. has a a big role to play. Colossus yeah. has a big role. I mean, him and yeah. Johnny Storm in Love Triangle. Mm -hmm. um, you know what happens to Ben Grimm? I mean, you you are yeah. looking at this. I mean, the Hulk there is is not the Hulk that you expect. This is perhaps a smarter Hulk than you know the, than you would expect. So you've and got that's, uh, that's Rhodey in the armor, not not Tony. That's right. Um, so you've got these, uh, you know, you've got these heroes, and then you're on the other side, you've got the villains, and like I said, you've got the X Men in the middle, middle, and they all go their separate ways because the X Men then peel off because they don't want to be, you know, they don't want to, you know, they feel attacked right away by the heroes who are like, oh, Magneto's a murderer, but yeah, why is he on, on the heroes thing? Well, he's a mutant, blah, 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 blah. Right. And so you've got then, you've got the villains on the other side, you've got Doctor Doom, and you've got these egos that start clashing, and they all land on different sections of the planet, and they, like I said, the X-Men fuck off and find their own little <laughs> base. And you see these things happen over the, the course of the books, and you know they've all been collected into a one book, uh, thankfully, and it's a great book. I mean, it is, you know, circa early 80s. It is a, uh, you know, the, the, the art style is perhaps not as polished as we expect to see nowadays. Um, but what it does do is, again, this thing about, you know, it shows the egos and how they clash. What happens if you put Hank Pym and... Um, Reed Richards in a room. What happens if you put Dr. Doom and Magneto together? Right. I mean, what's the thing there? You know, Doom is obviously perhaps the biggest eager, eager name, maniac uh, of the lot. Mm -hmm. You've got Reed Richards in there. Uh, like I said, you you see you see these love triangles come up. Um, you know, didn't Molecule Man fall in love with Titania in this? He book? did indeed. <laughs> and Molecule Man went from being a C-list <laughs> yeah. joke to being tremendously quite possibly powerful. the most yeah. awful villain in the MCU because he just had a wire loose and somebody fixed that fucking wire and all of a sudden, oh shit, everything's made of molecules, he can control everything. Yeah. Uh-oh. Um, and then, of course, you also have the bonus of the debut after you know somebody's uniform gets ripped to shreds <laughs> during uh, you know there's a battle number of uniforms are ripped to shreds a certain web slinger asks i think johnny storm oh where'd you get your your, your suit repaired and he says, oh there's a little doohickey in that room he goes to the doohickey he sits in it this black blob drops out of the machine mm -hmm. encircles him and says, hello venom um, See, that part like why does he just go to his uh, yeah use the machine in there this alien technology you've never seen before i mean it, it does have a, a big issue because again pete there is one of the smartest ones there he is a fucking scientist. right and i'm not sure i mean that <laughs> to me judgment. is a little bit <laughs> yeah but i mean again we get to see venom for the first time we well we get to see the black suit and the fact that it's a symbiote but we don't understand that it's venom quite yet until they come back and we start to see the various things that the, the suit does, but it's a great, great. Um, it was a great sort of like turning point for the Marvel uh, universe back in the eighties, because the fantastic four wasn't the same after that. Ben Grimm left right. because Ben Grimm could be, could turn himself human again. Right. And even after out of his own book, Ben Grimm's space ranger, it was weird. <laughs> didn't last very long, but, um, yeah, I mean, there, there's so much in this book. It's um, we see a Captain Marvel who's more like Teona Paris's character, right? 
and we see what happens to her and then we see the beyonder and somebody constructs a piece of machinery to siphon off the beyonder's powers and what happens when absolute power gets given to somebody who can't handle it and what you know claw ulysses claw is in this and he is much different to what you get in uh black panther um so yeah it's just an amazing an amazing book that for its time i think was miles ahead of anything that had been done before it was so ambitious i think it was the first yeah. time they'd done a crossover of that magnitude where everybody is pretty much involved yeah i, I had never seen anything like it at, at that i, I was at my first crossover period for me yeah and one i didn't know it was one of the biggest ones in the history of comic books i'm um, still to this day but i was just blown away page after page seeing all these characters from all these different books that i loved in one book together it, it was just mind-blowing for me and that's what i remember the most the second most thing i remember and it's so stupid uh you mentioned before that the x-men had their own little secret place away from each other there's this one panel where I know it's Nightcrawler eating a cookie, but the way the cookie was drawn, my friend and I were laughing. My friend Brian Castro, childhood friend, we were laughing for 10 minutes. We're saying, why is Nightcrawler eating a rock? Which was hilarious when you're a kid, but not yes, so the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the cookies look more like scones or rock cakes. It did um, look like a scone. I didn't know what a scone was at the time. Yeah. So yeah. I'm like, why is he yeah. eating a rock? And again, the art was not, uh, you know, it was great. It was obviously fine for the standards of the day. But I mean, let's face it, the, the standards have improved exponentially oh because there yeah. is more budget behind these things now. Yes. Um, but yeah, it's like I said, it's my first experience of a of a crossover and just blew me away massive um and yeah i mean there's secret wars 2 the return of the beyonder and then there is another secret wars and both of those are absolute <laughs> muff cabbage stay away from them as yeah. best you can uh there is only one secret wars and it's the og original gangster agreed now before we get out of here are there any other books you want to mention quickly that did not make the list but were just on the cusp oh i mean We've gone through Days of Future Past. We've got, um, let me see. Well, we didn't tap any of the other what ifs because they can be really, Ooh, you know, yeah. really cool as well. Um, I think, you know, I've pretty much, I think I've named most of those, to be honest with you. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking right here. Um, uh, Age of Ultron. Oh, yeah. Age of Ultron is another one. And like I said, the beauty of the Marvel. Um, unlimited app is that it's only 10 bucks a month i think if you actually pre-buy a year it comes down by a, like two payments or something but i thoroughly recommend it it's one that i got a lot of use out of and then you find a book that you really love and then go support a comic book store go in not just on national comic book day go in look for these books ask for their recommendations ask them to order one of these books for you whether it be marvel whether it be dc whether it be any of the other imprints and we um you know next week's show is going to be really cool i mean yes the last two have been cool but we are going off book we are going off marvel off dc we are looking at different imprints there's books that will be included that may be part of dc or marvel now but they weren't at the, at time. the time yes there is a whole slew of books out there. I am so looking forward to Ray's very esoteric <laughs> fucking, you know, uh, total tangent busting selection. Mine is probably going to be a little bit more traditional because, again, old man, older tastes. Um, but there is so many good books out there. For example, Fables. Oh, yeah. And I'm giving away one of my picks for next week fables look it up love it obviously telltale did a video game version mm -hmm. um which was all about the werewolf character um but yeah fables is just fucking cool but um, that's for another week really quickly i want to give shout outs to deadpool and cable which is one of my favorite series uh deadpool is just a great character i i love the sense of humor it i love deadpool too i just don't think he's had that many seminal books i mean you know deadpool kills the marvel universe which is 
kind of fun. Deadpool in Marvel Zombies is kind of fun. Yeah, but, uh, and I've got I've got I've read all the Deadpool books on on that app, and there's nothing. I mean, you know, I actually prefer stuff like Agent Venom, perhaps over some mm. of the Deadpool stuff. I think it's a case of the movie and Ryan Reynolds' version of Deadpool being actually a lot better than. See, I, I think he has these. They're not like big arcs, but they're maybe like three or four issue stories that I think are phenomenal. Like the the one where he fights Bullseye for a few issues. I think that's hilarious. Um, the the reason why Deadpool and Cable work well for me is that they're just such different characters. He's goofy and sarcastic, and and Cable's just a straight up you know mutant messiah guy. Yeah, uh, I love the contrast there. And the yeah, other book. I did not mention was a uh, Hulk future imperfect, which I think is a fantastic story where current Hulk goes to the future and guess what? It's a post-apocalyptic future. Sounds good to me. And the only person that survived it and could save a small group of people was him who later becomes a warped and twisted version of himself. So he ends up fighting himself. Uh, as the Yeah. Monster. I mean, look, we didn't cover the fantastic four. Um, we didn't, I mean, there, there were a lot lesser characters in there that we yeah. didn't, uh, we didn't cover off. I mean, there's, there's so many of these great books and great arcs. So I thoroughly recommend one supporting your local comic book store and two right. getting the Marvel app to, to, to figure out what your tastes are and expose yourself. No pun intended to, um, <laughs> Not literally uh, to, expose yourself. Yes. No, literally exposing yourself in a comic book. store that's frowned <laughs> upon. Um, but no, expose you got that Paul right Simmel? by the marvel app to um to you know things that are a little bit outside your comfort zone and i think that's where you know that's why i read all the camera Kamala, Kamala khan uh run uh -huh. that's where i found out about agent venom and didn't really know much about him uh -huh. so uh that's a, that's another great run i mean there's a run where steve rogers has a kid that kid's a little shit um there's the ultimates there's guardians of the galaxy Guardians of the time. Galaxy. I mean, not everything's been turned into a movie yet. Um, right. <laughs> the um, the Hawkeye um, with um, Matt Fraction's the, Hawkeye, so good. Yeah. Uh, Vision, another. The, yeah, the, the, the Vision, Vision one, which was uh, it seemed like a very, uh, you know, a, 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 the, the, something that they based one division off. Partially, I mean, whole, very much. Yeah, very much. So. Yeah. You can see where they bounce stuff off some of these classic stories. But the TV shows may be great, the movies may be great, but the books are so much more. Because the books show the unfilmable. Absolutely. You can try, but you can't fucking film it, Kevin Feige. <laughs> so that'll do it for our picks for the 10 best Marvel graphic novels and collections. Uh, I'd love to hear about your picks. Please leave a comment with your pick. Let us know what you thought of our picks and let us know some of your picks and we'd love to check them out. And as Marcus mentioned, we will see you next time with our favorite graphic novels that are not in the DC or Marvel universes. Thanks for watching The Beer Pad. Say goodbye, Marcus. Goodbye, Marcus. <laughs>